Cal, how important was it to see Ty Ty go on that run in the first half and he scored seven straight and just have some shots fall after, you know, it, it had been a little You guys bit. know before he got hurt, he was shooting 40% from the three and 54 from the line or from the field. And that injury got him a little off kilter and the same with uh, Severe. But I told the team after, it's nice that we're all back. You guys probably didn't see the tweak that I've been thinking about and went with a little bit, and I thought it helped us. Um, and, um, you know, and, and then just, like I said, holding guys accountable. Today, I thought Oscar got bullied. I did, and I was on him about it. And holding him accountable. Now, he gets 18 and 15, but he still got bullied. And, and, you know, I'm asking, just like I'm keeping key on and telling them I'm holding you to a high standard. I'm doing the same with all these kids. Somebody else may say, well, it's only that. No, I'm doing it with every kid. Jacob, let's go. Play Damien at four today. That's what I want to do. And now it becomes, okay, get it done. You got a guy there waiting to get his time. And I told Bryce today, I wanted to go Bryce, Damien and, and Lance because Lance deserves to play because he plays so smart today. That kid was a little big for him, but he still did pretty good. Hey coach, um, kind of on that note, when you have someone like Lance and some of these older guys like Davion and Kellen that you can rely on to kind of, come through when maybe you have someone like Oscar that's getting bullied, you know, it was that a conscious thing where you decided this year that maybe this team needed a little bit more of a veteran presence to go with, you know, the freshman stars that you have to kind of help. No, we, them? we, uh, we knew we had to change the roster. You know, we, uh, we needed to change and, you know, Ty Ty was a big part of that. You know, it's somebody that we wanted and, um, and then uh, Kellen and, you know, Oscar, who wanted to be here and, you know, I had to convince Kellen a little bit and uh, had to convince Severe a little bit. But I think, again, if you asked him, he wanted to be here. Um, so, no, I mean, and, you know, you still, you know, Jacob is transferred in. Davian transferred in. We got an older team. I've coached older teams before. You won't believe this, but I have. It just haven't been in the last 13 years because of the rule changes and the way everything was going, but it's, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're not delusional. They know what they are. See, when you're, you're 17 coming in, you think you're, I'm this and this and that and that. Cause I did it at AAU or here's a good one. I did it at the Nike camp. Why can't I do it here? These kids already went through everything. They're not delusional about anything. They know. And they look at, what's around them and say, my role, kind of like Davion, Davion six man of the year right now. And again, how well has he played? I put him in again for defense and rebound in the last game or the last minutes of the game. Cause I, I felt he needed to be in there, but we got a good group. And I, I'll say this again, good teams have really good players. Great teams have great teammates. This is a bunch of good guys that cheer for each other and they're there for each other. Yeah, John, I guess the assumption would be it's maybe easier to coach an older team than a younger team, but are there anything, aspects about an older team that are actually harder to do when, than when you have a bunch of young guys? Well, I always tell you, I like, I'm taking talent. Yeah. You know, I've said that from day one, but here's the good news. This is a veteran talented team. If you could get both, that's what you want. And we have that. I mean, everybody says the same thing. They watch us play, man. They're fun to watch. Man, they create for each other. We had 18 assists, eight turnovers. They create shots for each other. Every one of them's playing for each other. They cheer each other on. Bryce went crazy. The whole team went nuts for him. Damian played well at Alabama. They gave him the Gatorade bath, and you had to shower by Keon walking in after Kansas. I mean, these kids are about each other. I know you've heard um, – never mind. Go ahead. John, it's March, and you always say you're coaching for March. You want your teams to be peaking. We haven't heard the uh, landing the plane analogy this year yet. How, how's the runway looking for this team? Well, let me tell you what I did yesterday. I went to – and we did loose ball drills. 
people were in the gym. Now we had the, uh, the reserve who was in there, the, uh, the reserve group who was in the, in our gym yesterday, you had the JMI team, the, um, the, the donors were in there. We had 16 donors. Um, and we did a loose ball drill because against Arkansas, we refused to dive on the floor. So we did a loose ball drill. Problem was Sabir hurt his wrist. <laughs> but to start the game, did you see Keon dive on that and tip it forward and us get an M1 or two free throws? And I go crazy because we're emphasizing stuff and I want them to be locked in. I don't like doing loose ball drills. I don't like doing body to body this time of the year. But this team needed it, and we did it, and thank goodness. I even said, why did you do the drill, Severe? You know you have a wrist. He put his wrist underneath him to stop his fall. John, does it concern you at all that you have a game where Oscar gets bullied? Is that just credit to the other player or lack of focus or something on Oscar? Or Well, the guy was really leveraging him. That kid's really good, by the way. Brooks is a good player. And, uh, but when Oscar caught it tight, he scored. When Oscar caught it out, I said, don't throw it to him. If that guy pushes him out, then he's not getting the ball. And we still threw it to him a couple of times. But when he gets it tight with a good angle, it's a basket. But again, he got 18 and 15. And we're looking like, what? Come on, you're better than that. What are we, what, 30 and 20? We're all losing our minds. Me, the main one is me. Go ahead, Jerry. John, uh, Chin said yesterday that you guys have, you know, the, the pattern this year is guys step up. When the opportunity arises, they do it. But how important are Oscar and Xavier to have it revolve around them? That's like having a middle linebacker on defense and an unbelievable quarterback on offense. That's what that's like. And, and like I say, severe, um, of all the point guards who are going for the Koozie award, I need to see one that has a bigger impact on the game than him, both defensively and offensively, creating shots, playing with speed. The pace of the game is what he dictates. Um, smart. Um, but then disruptive defensively, you say, well, he's small. Yeah, but how disrupt is it? You know, they were pushing off to get it up to court. So I'm proud of them. Um, it's just good that we got through the injuries. It hurt us last game. We were a little bit out of sync last game. I felt this game, we, we looked a little more in sync. Yeah, John, obviously the injuries might have kind of played a role in it, but defensively you guys have allowed about 10 more points on average than the first 25 uh, games. Is there anything you're seeing outside of the injuries given, you know, Ole Miss shot 50% tonight? Beat us on the dribble, and we were spread out all over the place. I mean, they shot 50% against us. Now we shot 60 against them, but they shot 50% against us, and that's not who we are. We were the whole time I was saying you just got to guard. Then they made a couple threes um, to fight. Now, I've watched their tapes, and, and I don't usually speak to the other coach, but I said I was in the position last year that you were in, Kermit. You've done a way better job than I did, and you kept your team fighting, and you got them to accept roles. They got two major injuries, or they're in the middle of our league or higher. So I think he's done a great job. The games, they don't quit. The only team that beat them pretty good was a &M. Other than that, it's a six-point game with a few minutes to go every game they play. Cal, at this time of year, especially with a team that, that's played as well as yours has, is there any kind of danger or concern with kind of just looking ahead and saying, let's just get to the tournament? No, I won't let them do that. We, we could go to Florida and get beat, but it won't be because we're overlooking them. We know how good they are, and it's on the road, and you know what it's going to be, a nut house, because that's what happens every time we come in town. 
And, um, you know, Mike's done a great job with his team. Uh, they beat Auburn. Um, you know, they've, uh, they had Arkansas beat. They did. And um, so we know how good they are. I, I, again, I'm laughing. This is the best league in the country. Why aren't we talking eight teams of ours in? What? I, I, what? What I hope is they separate the top four of us and we're all in the final four. My guess is they'll put us and another team from our league in the same region. They'll put two of us and two of them. So only two of you could advance. But if we're all spread out, we could have four teams in. Why don't we get eight teams in? Why, why are we not talking about other teams that are in the middle of the pack in our league? I think we should be getting eight teams in. I've said it. What the goal should be is eight. Coach, you, you prepared your team about on, to be ready on March. Did you see any kind of glimpses about the way that you would like to play at this stage of the season? Yeah, we played faster. That's what I wanted us to do. And that's what we talked about. And we grounded out when we needed to. We had two plays that I went to the grind out offense and Kellen got a three foot, four foot floater, missed it. Keon got a 15 footer on the baseline, his shot and missed it. But we did everything right. We grind it. We, we use clock. We just missed those shots. Yeah, John, something I haven't heard you talk about for a while is, is the fact you say that if you don't have a post present, your team is a fraud. Is Oscar the ultimate testimony to that this year? Did you ask me if we have a post presence? Well, you said if you don't have one, your team is a fraud. And a lot of right. people say, well, the game's changed. Maybe you don't need a post present. But I think that Oscar kind of makes your point for you. Yeah, yeah. We No, I, I'm going to say the same thing. If you don't have post presence, you got, you're a fraud. And if you think you're going to march through the NCAA tournament shooting 43s a game, good luck. Because one of those games, you're going to go five for 40 and you're going to lose by 20. And one of those games, you may go 20 out of 40, 22 and be all ecstatic first round. But you got to have someone that can get easy baskets. That's how you shoot a high percentage. John, you went undefeated at home this year. The uh, fans took a little while to get started, but at the end of the year, they were as strong as ever. Just your general comments on the uh, Rupp Arena crowd and what it's like to uh, have them back again. Well, last year, you know, that was a knockoff year. I've said it before. You had no fans. You had nothing here. And, you know, I think um, what we've done over our time here um, – you know, kind of tells you what we are and what we're about. And our fans, I've said it all along, are the biggest part of what happens here. It's what sets us apart. We go on the road, they're there. We go to North Dakota, they're there. They're everywhere. Um, you go to the conference tournament and the team loses and the fans want to sell their tickets, they say, I'm selling tickets to anybody but Kentucky fans. I won't sell them to our fans. So our fans got to go in orange and red. And yeah, I'm not. And they got their Kentucky stuff on underneath. So our fans are the biggest piece of this. And they pick these kids up. And they, they understand the ones that have really been following. It's been consistent over 13 years how we play. It's been consistent. It doesn't mean we win every game, but it's been consistent about this is who we are and how we try to play toward March. And this team is no different. So proud of our fans, proud to be working here, excited that um, for these players. Um, you know, I don't even want to hear about the, the from one year to the next. That was a COVID year. There were many of us that you had. It was a knockoff year. It was nothing. Get rid of it. So for someone to say, well, they went from this year to this, it was the biggest turnaround. Stop. I don't want to hear that. That was a nothing burger, what we had to go through last year. So, and these kids, they were cheated. They didn't get the Kentucky experience. They didn't. So, you know, it's great. Davion, 
could come back and Keon could feel it again and Lance and Jacob could feel it. This is what it is to be here playing at Kentucky.